Hi everybody, it's Curtis from Omaha Knife and we're gonna do another unboxing and order video. We've never done this with Council Tool before. We, we've done a couple of them with Grands Force. Um, Council Tool uh, has some stuff in the Grands Force uh, price range and some lesser stuff. And we'll, we'll go over some of those details as we unpack. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's um, kind of allergy season here with the crab apple trees and all that in full bloom. <clears throat> so, oh, uh, let me remind you, uh, you can see all of our videos uh, here on YouTube by following and all that. But also check us out on Facebook and Instagram on both of those. Uh, it's just Omaha Knife. And our website is omahaknife.com. And if you're traveling through the Omaha area, uh, very convenient off of I-80 to come and see us. Now, if you go north-south on 29, it's about 15 minutes out of your way. But it's uh, one, one way, 15 minutes each way. Uh, but, but it's not bad. Traffic here flows pretty good. So uh, let's get to unboxing these. Uh, we're gonna start with some of the cheaper stuff. The Sport Utility line, uh, e each of these axes in Sport Utility run, uh, line runs about 50 bucks an ax. We're gonna try to keep this video fairly short. If you've watched our other videos, you know that that uh, really never comes true, but we're gonna try. <laughs> so um, on the Sport Utility, they all come basically in this box. And sometimes they have the cardboard spacer, sometimes they don't. When they don't, you'll see chafe marks there because they're stacked like that. And they just rub each other a little bit. And um, I'm going to sidetrack a little bit and just point something out. Uh, depending on how the camera gets it, there's grind marks on that one, not on that one. Um, they're made by hand. Now they don't really go for the high level of fit and finish and cool look that Grand's Force does, but they want it to be a good act. So this one had some flashing or something and they fixed it. That one came out pretty square. Um, when they do the heat treat, that's where you get those marks. The heat, so they're, they're ground to shape. The heat treat shows up there and those spots show up. I'm guessing, nobody told me this. I'm guessing that um, they stack them and it's just uh, touching and. Uh, another head and it cools at a different speed. That's my guess. Um, so let's keep unpacking and we'll hit uh, other details as we go. So what are these ones? Oh, so this is going to be the Boys Axe 24 inch. And uh, oh, and so see on this how there's no packing to keep them from sliding around. So when you get one and there's blemishes on it, um, that's why. Now, when you go out in the woods and you swing it as hard as you can into a tree, it's going to get blemishes. It's a working axe, so they um, figure you'd rather save a few bucks on the packing when you're buying a $50 axe. And I, I certainly would. I agree with that uh, judgment. Oh, we're not going... We're not looking at the details like we like to on Grand's Force. Now, one thing Grand's Force does with their handles, they oil them to bring out the contrast in the lines. Uh, we unpacked the Grand's Force, and I've always done this. We've been here going on eight years, and I've always wanted to be there when Grand's Force is unpacked and just look them over. I just love looking them over. On the Council Tool, uh, they're not oiling them. They're not bringing the contrast out, but some of them are going to look just as beautiful when you use them a little bit and oil them yourself. And let's look at a couple of details here. <clears throat> they've been doing this the last few years. Now, I think they've always said USA, but it has the year now, which I think is cool. It doesn't matter this year or next year. But in 50 years, that's going to be pretty cool. And, and then the Council Tool logo on that side. Now, um, something about the way these are made. They're made differently uh, than Grand's Force makes them. Similar, though. Um, the, you know, different tools, the, the same uh, vintage, you know, pre-World War II or probably even pre-World War I um, in, in their big machinery. Uh, a dude with tongs is holding uh, this as it's getting stamped out. Now, um, if you've seen the videos, or you can tell by looking uh, just at the pictures in the axe book that comes with Grand's Force, that the dude with tongs is going from like tool head to tool head. Uh, Council tool, it's like one tool head. It takes multiple strikes, but one tool head to get the shape. That's why you don't, see, oh, would you, can you grab that um, uh, small forest axe? Uh, I, I set this here just in case we wanted to, and, and um, so when you look, so they're finished differently. Now, uh, the rough there is probably forged slag and stuff that, that's always there. If they wanted it to be smooth, they would have to grind it off. But the little dents, depending on how much they show up, the, the dents and individual character marks uh, that you get in a Grand's Force, 
um, not so much present on the council tool. Now, does that make one better than the other? No, of course not. Um, character's cool, but consistency is cool. Now, um, the eye is punched after the head is shaped. Um, does that mean it's always perfect? No, um, I've never seen one of them that's extremely off. Um, but it, it's it's a fairly symmetrical head for the most part. Uh, talking across the line, not, not just the one I'm looking at. So anyway, um, one thing I don't like the council tool does, and I'll tell you why they do it. Uh, I don't like these round wedges. On an axis mall, it doesn't even need a metal wedge. Um, the metal wedge will keep the wood wedge from coming out, but then again, so would glue. Um, when you look at these little cracks, almost never is that crack going to matter. You know, it's not going to let, you don't leave it out in the rain. It's not like it's going to let water in and rot. Almost never do they go all the way through. I only know of one example that that happened, and then I'm not 100% sure that that's why the crack was down here. But anyway, um, I don't really like those, but when you think about it in a factory environment, you have a flat wedge, try to get it straight and get it started, or the round one, the round one's gonna press in a whole lot faster. So that's why they use them on these cheaper ones. They did it one time on the more expensive ones, use the round ones, but they've gone back to the flat one because um, it costs more and people prefer what I prefer, the, the flat one and not the little splits. So um, let's, let's throw this aside. And we'll open one more. I think this is the same thing. By the way, the end of the box here tells us. Uh, I don't try to remember the codes that much, but SU for sport. Oh, it's it's up here uh, to sport utility. Uh, 2.25 pounds, but just 22 boys, 24 inch C for curved. Um, if for, for me, um, I can't read that without my glasses on, but at a glance, I generally know what those mean. So this is the same thing, but let's just see if there's anything unique in the box. Oh, and this came on a semi truck. Uh, that's why they're not packed very well. Um, normally I don't do this, um, use new inventory or customer, um, knives or whatever to, to cut a package open, but for the sake of time, now that particular small forest tax, super cool handle. Let's digress a little bit and show that. Um, this was in the unboxing video we did a couple of days ago when we got a truckload in from Grands Force. And I set this one aside because it was cool looking, but right away somebody called and said, I want that one. So we're going to get some pictures of it uh, today and then ship it off to uh, that dude. And now he's going to be mad because it's used. <laughs> no, he won't. <laughs> um, all right. So we'll talk about um, grain direction here in a little bit. We'll go to the wall. Oh, that has something I want to talk about on grain. Um, so these are all light colored wood. Oh, if you get one and the handle's dirty, dirty. Um, out of the box, you saw me cut the tape. Sometimes they're dirty, they're not used. Um, it doesn't very often uh, happen, but uh, every now and then that, that has some, now I'm calling it dirt, I don't know what it is. Um, because customers look at that. Now, I'm not picking on people who are picky because I'm picky, and that, that's part of the reason it's easy for me to see these things. Um, here's another unique thing that somebody's not going to like. Um, <laughs> the, uh, but in a working axe, it doesn't matter if you don't like it. And it's, it's a little bit rougher there. Uh, I would, myself, I would sand that uh, a little bit and clean it up because like I said, I'm picky too. So I'd sand it with like some 220 and oil it, uh, and it would be fine. <clears throat> uh, I started saying something and then digressed twice. Right. What's that? You're not trying to make fun of people. Oh yeah. So not trying to make fun of people that are picky. Uh, I just want to point these things out so you understand why they're that way. And sometimes things happen um, that, that really are bad and we want to get those axes exchanged. So here's another one. Um, there was something, I mean, it's, it's going to be a dirty environment when you're making that stuff. So the dude packing this one probably had dirty hands. The other stuff, I don't know what it was. So um, let's run over to the axes. We, we kind of started unpacking and then it's like, oh yeah, we need to do a, a video. Because uh, we haven't done an unboxing video of Council Tool before. Now, again, the reason we haven't is because uh, the details of Grand Sports stuff is really cool. It's just fun to look at them. <coughs> All right. Let's look at the end grain on uh, some of these. See how this grain is crossways. So this handle is going to break right away, right? Not right. It's not. Neither is that one. Neither is that one. Neither is that one. 
So here's a straighter one as people like, and there's a straighter one as people like. Uh, but perfectly straight, no, we haven't seen a perfectly straight one yet. These are, uh, oh, that was three and a half pound heads. These are three and a half pound heads, but straight handle. Can you see them all? Mm -hmm. um, so see, they're, they're really just not that straight. Um, and I'll come back to why, uh, what I do with the ones I set aside. There's one that is just kind of a neat Those little detail where, oh yeah, same. All right, so on the grain, um, so here the tree was growing not very fast. That year, a whole lot of growth, uh, less, and then back to small. I don't know, I wasn't there, I didn't see the tree, but I would guess this tree lost a branch or something higher up, and then the tree really pushed to replace that growth because it had a lot of cambium and the tree was used to sending a lot of resources there. Now, see, when I say uh, being interested in details. I obsess on this stuff just like you guys. So I wonder why things happen. It doesn't make the act any better or any worse, but you wonder. So anyway, that year, a whole lot of growth. Now, I mentioned it in the Grand Sports video. One customer didn't want any of this pithy wood, he called it. And pith would be soft, like the inside of a weed or the inside of a really large uh, radish. <clears throat> but in this case, it's just wood. Now, if your whole handle is, is tighter grain like that, it's going to be presumably a little bit harder. If it's wide grain like that, presumably a little bit softer. Now we're talking very subtle, but being a little bit softer is going to, in theory, make it a little softer on your hands, have a little more give. Being a little harder uh, would sting your hands a little bit more. But I'll bet if you had a handle that looked like those two lines, a handle that looked like those two lines, you couldn't tell them apart in an hour you know, an hour of hitting and hitting and hitting, I don't think you'd be able to discern it. Now, which one would break easier? Probably the one with the tighter grain line because it's not going to have the flex yeah. being harder. But does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. It's just fun to think about. <laughs> um, yeah, the other one wasn't any big deal, just uh, cross grain, and we're, we're seeing plenty of those. Now, so the thing with cross grain, <clears throat> um, and I mentioned this in other videos, so if you've seen the other videos, you can jump ahead a minute. Um, the first ever video on YouTube about um, rehanging or, or rehandling axes was a dude that worked for the Forest Service. Uh, there was only one. Everybody watched it. And there was a couple things in there that he said that were not really correct, but it was an excellent video, and I still recommend it. The video is called An Axe to Grind. It's an old dude, like a handlebar mustache. I think he has suspenders, and he's a very credible guy. He really knows what he's doing. And people were not doing a nice job uh, on axes, really, before his video. Uh, I certainly wasn't. I don't know anybody that was. And uh, I watched that video, and then I uh, wanted to make all of mine look nice like his. And then I decided I wanted to look nice like Grand Sports. But I really wasn't aware that you could and should do that nice of a job. So that dude deserves a whole lot of credit. And then a lot of other people saw that video, went and did basically everything he did, said everything he said, and acted like it was their own information. So all these act experts that you see out there started from that video. So go back and watch that video because that's really where it all began. But anyway, he said front to back uh, on that. Uh, I prefer it front to back. It looks more cool. Let's grab that Grand Sports again. Um, now, again, this was of like 143 pieces on that order. This was the coolest looking one. <clears throat> and who wouldn't want that? That is super cool looking. And look how straight that grain is. It's not perfectly straight, but um, you know, pretty darn close to get a beautiful look like that. So that's the main reason to want straight grain in my view. In a working ax, it really does not matter. Now, occasionally, Oh, I'm going to hold on to this and um, and make one other little point. Occasionally, an axe will break, like in the first few swings. That's an entirely different thing. Grain orientation has nothing to do with that. Um, Video Grand Sports did a long time ago, and I can't point you to it now. Um, they did a study on handles that broke like that. I don't remember it was virus or fungus or something like that. Something that happened to the tree when it was alive that made it so the cells didn't bond as well. So that piece of wood's just gonna break. So when it happens, um, all, all the major brands just get you a new ax uh, immediately. They don't send you a different hand because it happened so fast, they're just gonna replace the ax. Another thing I, I want to point out, let's go to the floor on this. Um, so this is the council tool, three and a half pound, 36 inch. And this is uh, the Grands for Small Forest Axe. 
when you look at the amount of wood on the handle, there's at, you, you can't see this profile, but uh, it's thicker. The ground force is thicker than a council tool by, I don't know, 10%, maybe more. But in this dimension, um, I don't know if they're similar. So on the council tool, with the longer handle, uh, it's really not bigger. And hardly ever does anybody break one of these. So a small forest axe, when people are, are afraid that the rotated grain is going to cause it to break, it's, you know, physically, the physics of it really don't make sense. Uh, but again, cool looking, it's cool looking. <laughs> Uh, on the council tool um, handles that look like this, maybe I already said, we, we don't see them breaking. Um, oh, something else that I want to say on this uh, two-tone, uh, a lot of people are afraid that's going to break. Now, down here, they don't worry about it as much as higher up, but, but people think it's going to break on that grain line. Of all the broken handles I have seen in my life, I have never seen one break on the color line, not a single one. You would think that just by coincidence, I would see that, but not yet. So there's no strength difference. Sometimes it'll break in the light wood, sometimes in the dark wood. Now, I, I don't mean to sound like I, uh, it, it may sound like I'm saying they don't break and then turn around and say they do break. Let's go up to the head. Um, broken handles almost always have damage in here from uh, overstrike mainly, but even when you're splitting, sometimes you, you get a good hit, but the handle can be wider than the head right here so you chew that up and eventually you chew that up enough that it, it will get a split that runs down in the handle or just overstrike it enough times and just you know over striking in the fulcrum here with you swinging the three and a half pounds as hard as you can and and hitting it there can break the handle so when we see those and they break has nothing to do with color light or dark um the I wanted to show you something. Oh, and we're gonna undo. I, I really sidetracked showing you stuff, but I'm gonna show you one other thing, then we'll unbox some more. Um, where did yeah, can you hand me mine? So, kind of interesting story on that somebody's gonna put in the comments. No, that story was not interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, on, on this axe, uh, th this is mine. Somebody bought it, it's a couple years ago. So, look at the lines in this, those dark lines. So I bought it and sent it back and they were certain it was gonna break. And, um, you know, with all these irregular grain lines and that dark there, uh, I knew it wasn't, but I understand that people worry about that stuff. We sent them another ax and I knew that the next person was gonna think the same thing. So I just took it home. Uh, well, I sanded it, it looks uh, a little better. I sanded it with 220 and, and put some uh, ax wax on it, a product that we sometimes sell. Uh, for a handle treatment, but I sanded it with 220 and up here I sanded it so it's a little more like a Grand's Force looks a little nicer through there like a Grand's Force compared to the council tool finish which uh, you're not maybe glaring right, I don't know, but it's rougher right there. Uh, yeah, you can see it there and from that line it's a little bit rougher there. I just sand it, uh, it looks a little better. But I've used this for a couple of years, used it quite a lot and of course it hasn't broken and it's not going to unless I do something that would break any handle. I made this sheath, by the way, and um, the rivets I used weren't really long enough to engage each other. So um, a so couple of them, apart. yeah, couple, but <laughs> it's got the third piece in and I glued it with leather glue. So having the rivets there is still kind of important. If the blade cuts through, you wanna have the steel there to stop the blade from coming all the way through. And I'll re-rivet it eventually. But anyway, um, so, uh, let's go back to opening. See that one we're done with. So, oh, so we got a few replacement handles. I just want to show you how the, how they compact like that. And look, well, so these are our premium handles. So they try harder to, you know, to make these look the way people want. Now, again, the fact that that it honestly technically doesn't make a lot of difference the grain orientation it does make a difference in that people want it a certain way so they try to uh to give you what you want so see this is pretty pretty straight not perfectly straight but pretty good um that that one is perfectly straight now um if somebody wants that one um oh but there's an ugly on it so this is going to need some work i may just put this well look it, it needed yeah, to be trimmed. Uh, it didn't get trimmed at the top. Um, now I have a really good excuse to put it with my handle. <laughs> They're all like that. The, oh, really? Okay. Well, we'll measure them and trim them before we send them out. Um, because not everybody, well, 
Yeah, people don't want to mess with that. So we'll trim those before we put them out. That's just an oversight. Now, uh, one thing about the handles, Council Tool uh, makes, I mean, they've got a handle shop, but their handle shop's not big enough to do all of their handles. Um, I would guess that there's a good chance that this one came from their shop. The sense I get, um, nobody from Council Tool told me this, but there are some handles that are obviously better than other handles. And I think those are the ones they're doing themselves rather than getting them from a handle vendor um, otherwise. But these uh, just missed a step, a final step, getting cut off. That happens, not a big deal. Now, if you got it and didn't have the tools to cut it off, you'd be mad, <laughs> but you can't replace it without the ability to cut it off, so it wouldn't be that big of a deal. We're gonna open a couple other samples. So this is a belt hatchet. What's JP stand for? I can't even, I don't know, but uh, Hudson Bay. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's a small box, so we know it's a belt hatchet. Why is, I don't know yeah. what JP is. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, and, and one thing, when if, if we've opened this, if I'm the one who opened it, I pick these out. If Anne opens it, uh, she tapes it back together. So when you're getting your stuff out, you scratch the back <laughs> of your hand on those. <laughs> so they're, they're packed like this. And a nice inner box. Um, now, what I said before about packing, if I could myself, if I were buying this and I could save a couple bucks to not have double box, I'd rather save the money, but they do present them nicely. So this one... Now, cool. I'm not one who likes two-tone. I would love it if it were all dark like that uh, or all like that. I, I'm just not that much of a two-tone person, but some people are. Remember what I said about the wedge? They did the flat wedge here. The wood, I've mentioned this in other videos. A poplar, I think, is the wood, but it's, it's kind of an elastic -y wood um, where the hickory is not. Hickory's really hard and doesn't want to give. So, so that kind of spring loads it. And oh, um, do we have, oh, I, I think I want to show this. I don't have a pointer, but see kind of the irregular. They put it on with a press and it pushes wood ahead of it. And then they, you know, pretty quickly take, it's not a razor blade knife necessarily, but something like that and trim that up. Uh, you always see that on council tool axes. And sometimes, oh, let's see, do we, I can't tell, maybe a little bit there, scratch into the metal. Mm. Uh, that stuff's normal. Doesn't mean you have to like it, but it is normal. They all have it. There are little booklets that comes with it. This comes a couple different ways. This is the mask sheath. It also comes with a full cover. So that's how those come. We'll set this aside and repack it. Now, on the double box thing, uh, to get your packing slip inside, we tear this open. Uh, when I pack stuff, to be honest, I throw your packing slip away and I don't tear it open. I just put the label on. Uh, we don't lose very many packages, so I don't myself see the importance of having the packing slip in every single box. Uh, and then when you don't know us and you get a product that's been opened, it's like, why has this been opened? Mm -hmm. Was it returned? Is there something wrong with it? Is it a fa I mean, all these things do go through your mind. So on these, I, I kind of not. All right, so this is a Woodcraft. Uh, that's probably the weight, 1.7 pounds, CC Camp Carver axe, I guess, 16 inch handle and C for curved. Um, the staple thingy didn't work very well, but let's go ahead and open it. And again, I always, no, when I'm doing it, I take, I stop now and take them out because I've been scratched by those before. And say I don't stick my hand in it, I just dump it out. Um, so this box, nicely printed. And so this is going to be a Camp Carver. Um, we'll go ahead and unwrap this. So if you get one that's not wrapped in plastic wrap, it's probably returned and somebody else hated it and we dumped it on you. <laughs> um, so now, now these are sharpened nicely, the, um, uh, the Woodcraft series. It's a different sharpening method because it's a Scandi, so, so that's flat. Uh, Scandi grind now, you're probably seeing some glare there. Is that some burr? No, it's just where, where the burr was taken off. Um, so that's a Scandi grind. Now, Scandi, for chopping, Scandi isn't as good as, as a concave, but for all other tasks, it's better. And the Woodcraft stuff is also hardened on the pole side or the hammer side and intended to be hammered with. And, you know, ground, uh, you know, on the Transforce stuff, some people don't like that it's not perfectly flat, but it is perfectly flat on the ones intended to be hammered with. This one is intended to be hammered with, and uh, Council Tool flattens it. 
Um, by the way, they're not heat treated here. The concern is breaking there. So you heat treat here and here. Um, anything else to know? I don't think so. If this were mine, I would work the handle a little bit with fine, finer sandpaper. Oh, look at this. We, we saw that it was just unpacked. There's some scratches there. Um, probably the handling person uh, put that there. So not, you know, it didn't get dropped on the floor here. When people get that stuff, we seriously, we get a lot of messages or, you know, emails or whatever, uh, where they assume we dropped it on the floor before we sent it to them or sent them a pre-owned one or, you know, something like that, but we don't. And here's the sheath, it's stapled. So we won't go that far in unpacking the little booklet and the sheath for it. Look in there. Um, we'll do one more. How long is this video running now? Uh, 25. Yeah, I told you it wouldn't be very short. <laughs> so we, we will handpick the nicer council tool, but it is harder for us to do. So another two-tone, uh, and it is a Woodcraft uh, pack axe. Let, let's just open the plastic on this one, too. Um, so again, we see where it touched other heads. So that wasn't in packing. That's, you know, the blacksmith threw it on other heads. Um, Scandy grind there, hardened there. Um, trimming. Uh, under there. Now, they they learned some time ago that it was important to do that. Uh, I wish I had a pointer, but I don't. I'll just use my thumbnail, which I don't know. I, remind me to do my nails. People are not are going <laughs> to think that I never do any work with nails uh, that long. Uh, so anyway, they kind of cut in. Uh, I don't have one here to show you, but they learned when you press that on and don't trim it up, you can get a split running down. We had like a couple ever where the head caused it to split. So the handle wasn't broken, broken. Just from right there though, it was splitting down the long way. And uh, we had it a couple times, and of course we're not the only dealer. So they saw it a few times and um, changed how they do it to prevent that. Um, let's see, is there anything else? We've kind of opened everything. Uh, anything else that we want to mention? Do we want to open any other? Oh, uh, you, you said about hand picking. Mm -hmm. So you saw what it's like to, you know, to open these to look at them. With Grand's Force, they're all loose, so it's very easy to look through. So if somebody says, "I don't want two tone," uh, yeah, we'll, we'll open and get you a not two tone. If you're like, "I want dark wood," we're, we're going to get you dark, but we don't want to open them all because it takes a while, and then it's offensive to some people to get a, a previously opened box. So we don't like opening very many. Um, but what, what, go ahead and ask for anything you want. I'm not trying to discourage you. Just that instead of getting you the lightest colored one in the place, the first light colored one we come across, we're going to stop looking. So that, that's the difference in hand picking there. Um, I don't know. We can open one more. The, on the more expensive, um, axes that the handles are nicer it's a nicer grade of wood um so handles when you buy an axe handle and it's like a grade or c grade that's the grade of the raw piece of wood so it's a nice light colored piece of wood for those who like that pretty straight grain um so um it's always going to be a pretty nice piece of wood on the premium stuff uh a wood now sometimes you take some a grade wood and put it on the lathe and it comes out looking terrible. Sometimes something that's ugly on the outside has a great looking handle on the inside. So that's why sometimes on the lower grade, you have a great looking handle and on the higher grade, you know, it's two tone or, or whatever you don't like. Because again, the wood is graded as the big chunk of wood before it goes on the lathe. Now something you may be wondering why, let's come back to these and talk about some wood grade things a little bit. Um, so, to, to get the grain aligned straight, it's a, two, two things. It's a manual process of lining it up, but then also uh, a piece of wood that is C grade, um, the grain doesn't run necessarily straight the full length. Imagine it has a little bit of rotation in the piece. So it might be perfectly aligned here, but come to this end and it's not. So that, that would get it C. And other stuff, you know, color, um, 
I don't know though if, if color matters. You you because you see some color in some A graded wood. Um, little knots. I don't know that that's just color, but you you sometimes see little knots and evidence of knots. None of these are really. If I would have thought of that, I would have uh, looked out in the store. We've got a bunch more of these. I'm sure I could have came up with some knots to see. But you can see these just aren't as. They're not as pretty. Yeah, they they have visual blemishes to them. Yeah, so I, I'm sure that tone, because you really don't see that on the expensive axes uh, or in Grand Sports. Grand Sports only does premium. They don't have, you know, a, a lower range. So, but when it comes down to it, it doesn't matter other than what you like. Um, if I were buying an axe for other people to use, it's going to be one of these. Uh, the handle is not going to break under normal use. Any handle is going to break under abuse. So I'm going to get a cheaper axe. So when my friends screw it up, I'm not <laughs> sick about it. Um, so, oh, this one has, that's not premium, right? That's just, no. so it has the little wedge, the flat wedge, which, you know, see no splits. Now, even those can have splits, but this one doesn't maybe a tiny bit right there. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I rehandle, I don't put the metal wedges in. I do add a little bit of glue. Sometimes for the glue well, that I add. Now see this one. The, this one isn't really going to pin it in very well. But what I do, rather than the metal wedge, I, I just put super glue on that seam when I'm done. And then like wipe it. And that seals it in good enough. Now this is kind of interesting. The kind of arrowhead uh, trim job, but I'm sure the dude had a razor blade knife and it was kind of messed up. He just put it crossways, crossways. Again, I look at details, wonder how they got there when it doesn't matter. A little bit of a gap there. Some people obsess on stuff like that. <clears throat> um, Is the head going to fly off? <laughs> maybe someday. No, it's not. <laughs> um, so when you're striking, no, no, people get less concerned at the back, but more concerned at the front if there's a gap looking at front to back. But really, all this tapered surface is front surface because this, it's not, I, I, I hope I don't need to explain it any more than that. As it wedges, all that, you know, that shape is going to hold it in place. So having a little bit of a gap there, there, or there is not going to make it uh, come loose. No gap on the bottom side. Now, I have bought more than 200 used old axes at estate sales and stuff like that. Um, it's amazing how crappy of a job you can do putting a handle on and have it still stay. <laughs> Uh, you know, some of the stuff I bought, I go mess with it and think it's going to fly off and then wound up, you know, because the handle's warped or whatever, wound up just cutting it off in the end because it will not fly off, even though it was poorly done. Back to a round wedge. That's, you know, straighter-ish at that end. And yeah, and at that end. So that was for, so people would like that handle. Um, remember when I said about the elasticity of the wedge wood? See how compressed it is here versus there? That's why you don't just use any old piece of wood for the wedge. You can. Uh, they used to use aluminum in these and may still in some. Aluminum doesn't compress at all. And those are really tight the day you get them, but with some vibration and stuff, mm -hmm. um, a lot of those came loose. Now, when I say a lot, we sell a lot of axes. And not even one, one time a week, somebody call, you know, they've had their axe a couple months and the head's coming loose. And I hated that and quit carrying the aluminum wedged ones. I think they're still doing some, but but these these are much better. The complaints that we get on the sport utility stuff, it, it, people who are wanting the aesthetic things, when it comes to using this ax, <clears throat> um, you know, as a tool, it's an excellent tool. Um, one thing I was talking about on the wood between the premium line and uh, the cheaper line. It's a different steel also. Nicer handle. The steel on the premium line is 5160. It's a good striking steel. It is going to stay sharp longer. Uh, than, I don't know what this is, you know, like a 1095, 1070, whatever, like that. Um, but mine that I've had for a couple of years, I sharpened it before I took it home. It's not been sharpened since. Uh, it's good. The other's better. How much better? I don't know. You'd have to take two and use them the same for a period of time to try to determine. Um, if I was only going to have one axe, I would get the expensive one. If I have a bunch of axes, I'm going to have a mix, so I don't get too hung up on that. They're all better than like the Chinese steel. So whether it's uh, Holtz or uh, Council Tool or Grand's Force, all the steel they use is good enough, even if it's different steel. It's all good. Some's a little better. Fine. It's all great. Um, was there anything else? that we wanted to, I don't know, did you, sh oh, um, I don't think so. yeah, so these are full size, they're boxed the same, um, but the 36 inch, and 
Here's one, by the way. Th this was uh, one that we opened looking for one. So we marked it darker because somebody wanted didn't want dark. So we marked that darker. So if somebody's going to ask for darker, they'll get that one. So I think that's all we can say on this video. Uh, we appreciate people who comment on the videos because we do listen. Even if you're not very polite, we listen to your point and uh, consider it in our future videos. We're, this video, uh, these unboxing videos are kind of more entertainment than informational, but we're never gonna do videos just for the sake of doing videos. We want to show you things about the axes that other people are not showing you. So if there are things you wish we would show in these videos, uh, you can either comment, we don't always read the comments in a timely fashion, but you can email us through the website or whatever. And if, if there are not good videos on a subject matter, if it's a product we have or something you think we know about, ask for a video and we'll try to do a video for you. So uh, we're going to wrap this one up. Uh, check out our other videos here. Uh, do like and comment so that we know you like them. And uh, check us out on Instagram and Facebook and come to our store in Omaha, Nebraska. OmahaKnife.com. Ah, uh, yes, and OmahaKnife.com. Thanks. <laughs> we'll see you next time, folks.